Welcome to the first video in a series on where I show you how I made this large medieval house for tabletop gaming. This is my first structure that I've ever built for tabletop gaming. I am a new DM. I'm starting hopefully next week. Uh, and I built this not knowing that I was going to be DMing this soon. So it really doesn't have any kind of design purpose right now for the campaign that I'm building. But uh, it will be used. Eventually. I'm releasing all the videos at once just so you don't have to wait to see the whole process There was there was too much footage to put into one video and make it actually worthwhile at the end of the last video I'll be showing a complete kind of montage of the whole house how it works and some close-up footage I hope you enjoy this video series So please like and subscribe to follow along for future builds as well. So let's get right into it and show you the process on how I made this Mansion it's huge way too big. So starting out I wanted to just get all my pieces cut uh, for the first floor on the Proxon. This was a very handy and very helpful investment. They're not super expensive but man they really do make really great cuts and make work a lot easier. I then made sure I marked my pieces just so I made sure so I can remember where they were going to go. So highly recommend that if you're ever working on something as large, especially small or large, but especially large. So just making the layout here, this was really cool to see kind of the scale of the project I was working on. I still didn't realize how big everything was at this point because I'm only working on the first floor. I made this little model just to get an idea of the scale of the doors and the windows and the wall heights. I like to use a little mini with me at all times just so I can use it for scale on my build. But this made a really big difference and helped me kind of determine the size of everything. The next thing was to start cutting out some openings, mainly doors and windows. So I made a little template to help me kind of trace the doors. Uh, there was going to be several of them, so I wanted to make sure they were all the same. I use this template still. I've transferred it over to a piece of chipboard, something a little bit more sturdy but highly recommend using these and holding on to them for future projects. I've actually used this same template for some doors on some tile pieces that I've, that I've made. Um, one thing to always remember as well is to mind your thicknesses. As you can see, I had to trace that one twice uh, because I didn't mind the thickness of the floor. I used that same template to actually make a opening for the interior that was extra wide so I just trimmed half of one side of this and kind of doubled the width of it and cut it out and made a really nice large opening. Um, it's fun to get creative with the pieces that you make yourself, templates that you use. You can use them for all kinds of things so again hold on to them. They make a really big difference. I then used a couple of different methods for cutting out the openings. I started using the exacto knife and just made a number of passes with a new, with a new blade. This made a big difference and is definitely doable. Uh, I used the X-Acto knife exclusively on all the windows, but I ended up switching over to the Proxon for the doorways because I felt like I can get them a lot cleaner. Uh, the reason I did this was because I was actually going to be using the cutouts uh, for the actual doors and just fitting them back into place. I made them removable. In retrospect now, I don't know that I would make them re removable, but uh, that's what I did, and so th that's kind of why I went with this process instead. Yeah, so then I continued on and made some templates for the window cutouts. I used, uh, again, that model that I made uh, as reference to make these windows. I uh, just used the same material and traced it and cut them out. I ended up using the length of this these uh, skinnier windows for the width of the larger windows that I ended up making and it turned out to work very nicely. So I got those all traced up and then I cut them out again just with the X-Acto knife and then kind of started propping up the walls seeing how things looked and I was very satisfied with how things were coming along. Because I actually had cut out the bottoms of the walls I needed to reinsert those small pieces that I had cut out for the doors and just kind of continue the wall there so the doors would have a threshold to sit on. And they turned out working really well. You can't even see it in the final product. So yeah, hold on to those doors. You might be able to want, you might want to use them later. It was then time to start carving out the stones and brickwork. And I like to do this again with a ballpoint pen. Uh, 
starting around the openings, kind of framing those out and kind of pressing hard to create a good texture uh, and then branching out from there. One of the things you want to remember to do is to get the interiors as well because those might be visible. I've developed a pretty cool technique on how to do this. If you're interested in learning that, leave a comment down below and maybe I'll post a video about it in the future. Again, just branch out from there and put on your favorite podcast or TV show or whatever, some music, and just go to town. It was time to start doing a little bit of trim work for the interior walls. I cut out a bunch of thin strips, got them prepped, and started to texture them with a wire brush to give them a little bit of a wood texture. I then got out the tacky glue and started attaching them. You can see that I allowed on the bottoms for the thickness of the floors to sit on and made sure that they would fit together nicely. Uh, I like to use tacky glue when attaching this foam. Uh, I like it more than like PVA glue. It just seems to be more friendly to work with moving it around. It sticks really well. It doesn't slide around as much. Its viscosity, I guess, is a little bit thicker, so it's more pleasant to work with when attaching uh, the same material on top of itself. But yeah, I worked on the windows and the doors and just kind of started placing in the pieces there to get them ready. The next step was to actually do the wood floors. I started by tracing out a little kind of half circle here for the interior, almost like a landing that was going to be uh, against stone. Uh, every quarter inch I measured a line on both sides of the piece and then got out a longer ruler to trace in the floorboard. This is what I ended up doing on the brick as well. This made a big difference as you can see. Uh, on some of the brick pieces I did, I didn't do this, and you can tell because they got all wonky and weird, but they ended up working out just fine, looking a little bit more rugged and worn. So yeah, drew these lines in, got them nice and deep, uh, and then from there I started to do some breaking them out with some just random lines here and there to create individual floorboards. This worked really well. It takes a long time. Again, a lot of the processes that I, that I did on this for detail took a long time, uh, but I ended up texturing this again with a wire brush as well. This is a way faster way to get yourself a nice wood grain. Uh, I like to do the individual, like draw your own, like kind of more exaggerated wood grain pieces, but they just take far longer and this actually has a really nice result. I then went through with a, a little poker and poked in a bunch of nail holes because why not? gave it a bit more character and a bit more texture. It was then time to finally start putting things together permanently. I used some sharpened kind of barbecue skewers as little guides to put into the floor pieces and then used some hot glue and glued them all together. This process worked really well and made it really really sturdy and also kind of framed up any kind of not perfectly square cuts that I might have made. Uh, but I highly recommend using this technique. Uh, one thing to remember is to get those sharpened little pieces. They're only about an inch long, maybe a little bit less. Get those glued in on one side first and then push them in without gluing them on the piece you're attaching them to. Pull them out and then add your glue. So after attaching that really long wall, it started to see everything come together and it was really great. But this is where this video is going to end. The next video, we're going to get into the second floor, some of the tower pieces, and I believe the roof. So stay tuned, like, and subscribe. You can watch that video right away because it's available on my channel right now. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. See you later.